Hey all and welcome to another build guide. My name's Luke and this tutorial is all about making highly detailed trees which not only produce a fantastic branch structure but also allow for a highly detailed root system. This technique works really well for old, well-established trees with roots that raise above the soil. So enough talking, let's get started and make some trees. To get started you'll need some very thin wire that's easy to bend and manipulate. The wire I'm using is 28 gauge florist wire which is perfect for modelling HO scale trees. Each length of wire is cut to about 13 inches. 13 inches works well for a tree that's about 2.5 inches tall but if you want a larger tree just cut each strand of wire a little bit longer. All up I cut 15 individual strands of wire for this tree. Bundle them together, then fold them in half and give it a few twists to start the trunk. The loop at the bottom will be used to model the roots, so be sure to leave a loop of wire about this big at the bottom. Next it's simply a matter of splitting the wires in half, then twist until you get a suitable branch length and repeat. You'll gradually get fewer and fewer wires until you're left with two and don't worry if they're not perfectly split 50-50. When you finally get down to two wires you can create a loop and then twist that loop to create a finer spread of branches. It takes some practice but once you get the hang of it you'll be able to do it very fast. Additionally, you can press the loop inwards like a jelly bean, then twist again to get even more branches at the end of each arm. Once you've finished the branches, I just use some pliers to cut each loop open and then trim the wires to the size I want. Now for the roots. I basically follow the exact same method I did with the branches, except the roots tend to be shorter. If you're having trouble twisting, you can always grab some pliers to help twist. Once you're done with the roots, spread the roots out to be flat along the ground, and finally shape the tree by bending the branches to the desired shape. It's very easy to shape given the wire is such a thin gauged wire. To hide all that twisted wire and give it a more prototypical look, I coat the entire tree in Woodland Scenics latex rubber. The baking paper helps prevent the latex rubber from sticking to the cutting mat. I apply the latex rubber quite heavy, that way I won't need as many coats to completely hide the twisted wire appearance. You may even get away with one coat. There are a number of benefits to using the latex rubber to coat the tree. One, it does a great job of filling in the gaps and removing the obvious twisted wire appearance. Two, it accepts the paint well. And third, due to it being a rubber substance, you can always change and bend the wire armatures, even after the tree has been completely finished without damaging it. For this tree, I ended up applying two coats. However, the second coat was much lighter. You can speed up the drying process by placing the tree somewhere warm. This next step is optional, it only makes a very small difference, but basically I apply 2mm static grass to the tips of each branch to simulate much smaller branches. A small amount of tacky craft glue is all that's needed and a light dab of the static grass on the tips and once done I blow away the excess static grass. I went with this brown primer from Rust-Oleum to undercoat the tree. Remember to coat the bottom as well so that you get the underside of the branches. Next is the main tree colour and in this case I'm going for an apple tree look which tends to be an earthy grey colour. I mixed some black, white and burnt umber to get this colour and coated the entire tree. Don't worry if you miss a little spot. That's why I applied the brown undercoat so it wouldn't show obvious spots that have been missed. 
To add some highlights to the trunk, I lightly dry brush some white over the top. I still found the tree to be slightly shiny due to the cheap acrylic paint I used. So to dull down the shine, as well as blend in some of the white highlights, I gave the tree a light airbrushing with some Vallejo light brown. Now for the big transformation. The main leaf structure is Woodland Scenics Medium Green Coarse Turf. I used a spray adhesive and sprayed the branches, trying to avoid getting glue on the main part of the trunk. I then dip the tree into the tub of coarse foam. Do your best to avoid getting the foam on the trunk and then shake off the excess. Continue spraying the tree and applying more coarse turf until you get the coverage and density you're after. There may be areas that you'll need to press the foam in with your fingers. This tree took three coats of foam before I was satisfied. If you're after an apple tree, you're going to need some apples. These ones here are Woodland Scenics apples. They are very easy to apply, simply spray the tree lightly with the spray adhesive and sparingly sprinkle on some of the apples. I try to avoid placing apples directly on top because you tend to see apples on the side of the tree and hanging from underneath. If you don't want an apple tree, you're still going to need to spray the tree with the glue, however just skip applying the apples. To add some more life to the tree, I use these knock leaves. These ones are olive coloured. Basically sprinkle them over the entire tree and again avoid getting them on the trunk and anywhere you don't want them. I even sprinkle them from underneath as well and then shake away the excess. Finally I place the tree upright and apply some Woodland Scenics burnt grass over the top of the tree. This helps highlight the top of the tree simulating sunlight reflecting off the top of the leaves and the bottom of the tree appears darker indicating shadow. It basically adds a more three dimensional look when under layout lighting. Just use some tweezers to remove any leaves and bits of foam from areas they shouldn't be and if you're not happy with the coverage of apples you can easily go in and place apples while the spray adhesive still has some tackiness left or you can just as easily remove any unwanted apples with the tweezers. Now the tree is made, we need to install it. This tree due to its root structure is not as simple as other trees to install and requires a little more pre-planning. To help the roots appear ingrown, I lightly press them into the wet plaster and push down just enough for them to protrude from the top of the plaster. To remove the obvious appearance of being pressed into position, I use a very soft brush to blend the plaster in and around the roots. I'll keep doing this for about 5 minutes or so as the plaster begins to set. And once the plaster starts to harden, it becomes easier to remove the obvious brush strokes. And now we just wait for the plaster to set overnight. It's inevitable that some plaster will go over the roots. So to help remove the unwanted plaster, I use a stiff brush and dip it in water before brushing it over the roots, but don't brush so hard that the paint peels away. To easily paint the plaster without accidentally painting the roots, I make a thin earth colored wash. It will depend on the soil color you plan to have, but for me I got a good dirt color by mixing two parts burnt umber with one part burnt sienna and added a moderate amount of water to thin it down. I always test it on a paper towel before applying it to the scenery. Then it's as easy as brushing it over the scenery. The wash is thin enough that it won't change the colour of the roots should you brush it right over the top of them. Next to add soil, I paint in between the roots with a very lightly watered down Mod Podge mix and make sure you avoid getting glue over the top of the roots. I then sprinkle the dirt texture over the top and blow away the excess. 
roots. Finally, wash away the dirt powder from the tops of the roots with a wet brush. Now you're almost done. It's just a matter of applying your usual scenery application around the tree. For me, I finished applying the dirt texture over the rest of the diorama and to add detail under the tree, I sprinkled my leaf texture in areas that leaves would fall. I then sealed everything in place by using isopropyl alcohol to pre-wet the area and then used scenic glue to ensure everything got glued into position and didn't move. As a final touch I added some static grass tufts randomly around the base. Then I added a little bit of human element by adding some people. And if you look really carefully you might be able to see some birds in the tree as well. Be sure to check out bouldercreekrailroad.com for my latest modelling article titled The Number One Tips from Six Influential Modelers, which could help you learn from the experts. You can also follow along with my blog to see what's coming up and what I'm working on next. Hope you enjoyed the tutorial and I look forward to reading your comments. Cheers and thanks for watching.